Blessings. Welcome again to Capsum TV, located on our YouTube channel, Capsum. Uh, we can be found, uh, if you go out to YouTube, click on the magnifying glass, type in K-A-P-C dash S-O-M TV, and our live broadcast will come right up, and all our previous broadcasts, amen. We're talking about of late, uh, we're just going to jump right into it. We want to welcome the Holy Spirit to think through our minds, speak through our mouths, love and operate through our spirits and our soul, the living word of God. We release the angel armies who are assigned here to my life and this ministry and all those who are here at this ministry to cause these prophetic words that we're speaking on today to come to pass. We ask you to press the share button, like it, and subscribe it. We're only here for your spiritual enrichment and edification. We thank you again for turning on, tuning in, and turning up to the Kingdom Frequency here where we always have a fresh revelation, fresh spiritual food for your spirit, your soul, and your body directly from the courtroom and the throne room of heaven. Now, let's just jump right into it. Uh, this series we have been talking about, we started a new series, uh, the Kingdom Keys to Understanding the Gifts of the Holy Spirit, amen, and how they are activated in your life, what they are for. And we talked about last time how God has given us grace to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, for nurturing us. In other words, to cause us to grow up so we won't be immature in the body of Christ, so we can grow up into the fullness of the spiritual maturity level of Christ Jesus himself. And we, we discussed the word of wisdom. Wisdom is the ability Amen. To apply knowledge, amen, in a, a word of wisdom, uh, is a, applying a, a word of knowledge, a, a knowledge, amen, at that right time. So that's wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge revealed to you uh, f uh, by the Holy Spirit from the word of God. And so now that we talked about the word of knowledge and the word of knowledge is, is, a, is about applying it, you know, knowledge, uh, about information that we need to make the best decision or the best choice at that right now situation. And we said last time that it is a word of knowledge is manifested through a, an inward revelation or the interpretation of tongues, amen, of, or tongues, or interpretation tongue, or a word of prophecy or a vision or from an angel. It's not natural natural knowledge, amen, that can be gained, amen, through experience or information or profound acquaintance or deep acquaintance with the scripture. It is supernatural, meaning it's something we would not ordinarily be able to know and cannot learn on our own without the Holy Spirit. Wow, amen. We talked about all the various gifts and talents. And so last time we left off at, uh, we're going to take up at Acts uh, 5, where, uh, where Acts uh, 7, 11, 27, and 20, it talked about a prophet named Agabus was given a word of knowledge, a word of knowledge about a, f a famine that would afflict the entire Roman world. And uh, in a demonstration of the relationship between the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, the believers took the knowledge and they applied it. Wow. They took the knowledge, the word of, they t amen, they took the knowledge, word of knowledge, and they applied it, amen, and decided to send relief or help to kingdom believers living in Judah. We do that today, but we should do that more, uh, send relief or send help to the believers that are not faring so well in our cities, amen, or that are in the body of Christ. Food, he said, feeding the hungry, clothing, you know, visiting the sick. We need to do all of these things because it's described in the body of Christ. It's described for the body of Christ in the Word of God. And in Acts 5, it said, Peter was given supernatural knowledge or a word of knowledge that a couple named Ananias and Sapphira were lying, amen, it was their money that they donated to the church. It wasn't no need for them to lie, and they lied, amen, and they suffered the consequences as a result of that. And they, the people were surprised that, that the apostle knew about that. It was through a word of knowledge. Through a vision in uh, Acts, uh, Revelation 1 uh, and, uh, and 2 and 9 through 11, the, uh, the apostle John was given knowledge of the of the of the spiritual condition of the churches of seven churches that were of the kingdom believers in asia during that time so that he could give them messages of warning and encouraging from king jesus 
through the word of knowledge so the Holy Spirit can communicate a message from Jesus to you and I saying this is what's wrong here or this is what's going right here keep up or keep up the good work he may even reveal an important information to a believer so that he or she can convey to another believer what they need to function rightfully in the kingdom now let's go on a little bit here we're going to talk about uh the the uh power of faith to another it says faith by the same spirit the, uh, so the power of faith that we are authorized is the supernatural belief or confidence to act on the word of God. It's the, it's the kingdom providing us with a special faith, a special ability to believe in things so that we can take action to carry them out immediately. Every believer has faith. In fact, the author of the book of Hebrews wrote without faith, or the faith of God, you can paraphrase that, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to God must believe first that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him out. The gift of faith is what we're talking about. It's not the same as the faith with which we, we get when we come into the kingdom of God through, through belief in the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus on our behalf and the forgiveness and the remission we receive as a result. So th this faith comes from through belief in the constitution of the kingdom. As Paul wrote, faith comes by what? Hearing the word and the word by the, uh, through the word of God, the word of Christ. Another translation says faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ or the message of Christ. Neither is this gift, the gift of faith, the same as the fruit of the spirit known as faithfulness. Nor is it the faith to which kingdom believers live by on a daily basis as we trust the King Jesus to carry out his purposes uh, through our lives and to bring us encouragement and peace. This peace, this faith, it can be increased. Again, such faith can be increased through our exposure to applying the word of Jesus. Now, Instead, the gift of faith we're talking about now is a special authorization by the Holy Spirit, amen, to a believer so that he or she knows without a doubt that a particular outcome or something is going to happen will ultimately be manifested for the purposes of the kingdom. This is called special faith. Some examples of this uh, faith, uh, from this kind of, of faith follows as you review them, note, the, the close relationship between the gift of faith and the working of miracles. So in the context, one Bible uh, is commonly referred to the gift of faith as wonder working faith. The belief of the three Hebrew men who were govern, uh, government officials in the kingdom of Babylon that God could deliver them even if they were thrown in a blazing fire of furnace. Wow. Daniel 3 and 6, he did deliver them. Jesus' confidence that Lazarus, who had been dead, amen, for four days would be raised from dead to life. Wow. Amen. That's in Acts. And then the unwavering belief of Peter and John that a man who had been crippled from birth, amen, would be healed in the name of Jesus. This gift of faith is, is, uh, the, uh, is therefore the Holy Spirit motivating us to trust in the promises and the power of the kingdom. It's kingdom everything. That's all I minister about is the kingdom. Sure, uh, uh, prosperity, success, and wholeness, and healing, and deliverance, all of that come up under the umbrella of the kingdom. But you got to teach the ministry of the kingdom because the kingdom, of, the kingdom message brings deliverance in all areas of our lives. Now, the Holy Spirit encourages us uh, to uh, courageously carry out the assignment that we have in the belief that he will take care of everything that needs to be done to finish that work. He said, he that begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. That's the, and we have to have that special faith that he will do that. Now, let's go on. And that was in Acts 3, 1 through 11. Let's go on through the, through the gifts of healing. Amen. Found in Matthew 4 and 23. It says uh, to another, 
the gifts of healing, that, that one, as a cross reference, Matthew 4 and 23, that one Holy Spirit. Gifts of healing or supernatural cures for disease and disability. Gifts of healing or supernatural cures for disease and disability. You might be saying to yourself, why is he teaching about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Because it's pertinent to our life survival in the kingdom. Why we're here on if purpose if pertinent to the body of Christ is vital to our we need to understand who we are. We need to understand that all the provision, all the spiritual gifts, all the spiritual things that God has provided for us, as it says in Ephesians one and three and four, uh, second Peter one and four, first Peter one and four. We need to understand these things and how to appropriate them in our everyday life. Wow. Now, no natural means are involved in the gift of healing, whether medical science or other forms. Of, uh, of applying knowledge that, uh, through our not five natural senses. In, in terms of ministry, the kingdom on earth, amen, healing uh, uh, is the king's commitment to the welfare of us, uh, to the well-being of you and me and my family and your family, as well as his program for securing that. Wow. The healing power is mentioned in, 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 in not in the singular, but in the plural. It said gifts of healing. The word healing uh, sometimes is used in the plural in the context as well as gifts of healing. The plural usage of it refers to the ability to heal all different kinds of, of diseases or sicknesses. The book of Matthew uh, records Jesus was going about uh, in Galilee teaching, amen, and in their synagogue and proclaiming or preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. He will do the same thing today if we will believe that, if we will understand, we will uh, uh, understand, take the kingdom constitution and get the scriptures, uh, the keys of the scripture and utilize them or appropriate them for our every day life situation the, the gifts of healing addresses uh, many kinds of sickness many kinds of disease mental sickness physical sickness that bring us in a uh, disharmony with ourselves or other people amen or with the father if you're not in a in other words uh, the, you can be sick in your mind. You know, we all have, that's why the mind has to be what? Renewed with the word of God. And if it's not, it will cause you a mental, you, a lot of people in the, in the hospitals or institutions who have mental illness. You can see a lot of homeless people walking around and they're talking to themselves. Their mind is, they say their mind is gone. That's, that's a mental illness. Wow. And so there's a, a, there's a healing for that person. Why? It's called, the comes under the auspices of gift of healing. This would include such things as fear. Wow, yeah, gift of healing for that. Loneliness, depression, oppression, harassment. Gifts of healing are for the restoration of the, of the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. That's why I always say uh, that uh, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, and in what? All relationship. Because if you're not in a right relationship with God, you won't be in a right relationship with yourself. And if you're not in a right relationship with God or with yourself, you won't be in a right relationship with anybody else. You got a problem. You got a serious problem. So, But the gift of healing is for the whole person. We're talking about the key, the kingdom key to understanding the gifts of the Holy Spirit as they apply or as they relate to every kingdom believer. Really, it's pointing to restoring us to our right mind, our right position in the kingdom of God with the Father. And we should recognize that all healing comes from God ultimately, whether it's through a doctor's care or the body's natural healing processes. Yeah, God did design a body for not with natural healing process. I know they may not teach that, but we do that here. As we say all the time, it's better caught than taught. You better catch that. Wow. The gifts of healing, don't, they do not negate doctors. They don't nullify the doctors. But we should be aware that supernatural healing of physicians or doctors care and the body's natural ability to heal are, are different channels of healing. Oh, I'm going to say that one more time. Or they say, hit me one more time, as they said in the movie I was watching. He said, we should be aware 
that a supernatural healing of a doctor's care and the body's natural ability to heal are different channels of healing, not the only one. The first one, which is supernatural healing, that comes from the kingdom of heaven. The second one only helps the healing ability that God has placed within our own body. And the third one is an inbuilt capacity. In addition to this, there's different uh, there's a distinction or difference in between gifts of healing and our receiving healing by exercising faith in the what in the in using the keys of the kingdom from the kingdom constitution, which is the Bible. Wow. And so by exercising faith in the uh, using the keys that said the king's desire to heal her. He said he's not where he, he want all of us to heal. He, the Bible said he sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and healed us. His word will heal you right now. A person may be healed by applying to him or herself words uh, such as the one. The, uh, from the first book of Peter, he himself, talking about Jesus, bore or carried our sins in his own body on the cross or on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we, watch this, we have been healed, not going to be healed. We are already healed. Sure, it may be a fact that, uh, that, that, you, that, you, that you have symptoms of sickness or symptoms of a disease or you have some pains in this area, pains in it, but like uh, the book of Jonah said, they're just vanity. They're just, they're just lying symptoms. They're only symptoms. Don't give life to them by saying uh, uh, what you feel. Say what the word of God said and to bring about the manifestation of what you are saying, uh, agreeing with the word of God in your everyday life. Mm -mm -mm. So, your, your gifts are healed or manifested through you and I, sons and daughters of God, to who the Holy Spirit gives a special ministry of healing. A lot of people in the body of Christ have a special ministry of healing. They have a special ministry in, in various gifts in the body, but they're for the common good of the whole body of Christ, not for your own self-use, not for you to uh, uh, make a name for yourself or build a platform yourself for yourself. Watch this. So they happen through the activity of the believer as the Holy Spirit empowers that man or that woman of God. And we should also understand this, that we can't make gifts of healing or any other, other gifts operate according to our own will. Dr. Clark can't operate on his own. I have, I'm moved by the Holy Spirit. I can operate as the Holy Spirit uses me for a gift of prophecy or a gift of healing or word of knowledge or word of wisdom or whatever gift that he put in me. I can only operate it by the Holy Spirit. And we should keep an open mind. I say that all the time to receive whatever gift the Holy Spirit gives to us. Keep Remain, I say, R-A-H-O-T remain humble, open, and teachable and then s s h o t take a shot stay humble open and teachable did you catch that wow so these are some of the examples i'm going to give you of healing that go beyond medical help and are ministered through the intervention of a person who is empowered by the holy spirit be that a male or female in the body of christ and this some of this is taken from uh Matthew 12, 9 through 13, Luke 17 and 2, John 9 and 1, and Mark 9, 20 through 22. I'm not going to uh, open up all of them, but I'm going to uh, just uh, uh, condense what uh, they th are saying in essence. A man sh withered or shriveled up hand was completely restored. Wow. A centurion servant was paralyzed and on their deathbed was cured. A man who was born blind was given his sight. A woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years, she had, a, she had uh, uh, issues with uh, hemorrhaging with blood. And, amen, and, and who had, had been to a lot of doctors and they didn't help her. She spent everything she had and, was, and what would happen to the woman? She was made completely well. Whoa. Each one of them was healed by the will, working power of the Holy Spirit that was in Jesus. And the same thing will happen to you as a believer. In Mark 16, uh, uh, 17 to 20, says, These signs shall follow them by believing. Talking about the latter part. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I mean, they will be made whole. They will get well. Wow, Dr. Clark. Did I say that? Right. In Acts 9 and 33. Amen. Through Peter's ministry, a man named Aeneas, 
who was paralyzed and 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 on um, bedridden for eight years was made totally whole or made totally well in acts 2 and 8 Paul healed a man um, uh, on Malta, an island who suffered from apparently recurring bouts of fever and dysentery. It has been said that healing and compassion go hand in hand. Sympathy alone is ineffective. Sympathy means that you feel sorry for that person, empathize with their illness, and want to help them. But compassion Compassion is, a, is an irresistible urge to free a person from that sickness or that disease or that problem that's afflicting him or her. That is a true passion. And, and there is true passion in compassion that alleviates or helps that person from that service. In other words, relief. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Wow. Did I say that? Yes. Yeah. Now, in the ministry of the kingdom of heaven on earth, sons and daughters of God, the gifts of healing of the Holy Spirit, they are authorized by the Holy Spirit to you and I to free other people from being invaded by anything that's abnormal to the kingdom that does not agree with the kingdom. In this, in this way, the kingdom shows evidence that it is present it is right here and right now in you and i and we can address any negative situation here on earth in the kingdom of god healing is executing justice wow what did i say justice the the holy spirit confirmed the rights of you and i to live in wholeness nothing broken nothing lacking nothing missing nothing out of order nothing out of place nothing out of position nothing out of kingdom alignment and nothing out of a kingdom jurisdiction that's where we get the word shalom shalom from perfect peace that means wholeness in all areas spiritually and mentally and physically and financially and in all relationships now on um, the next one we want to discuss is the uh, 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 the working of miracles in one sense, all gifts of the Holy Spirit are miracles because they are beyond our natural experience or our natural ability. But the working of miracles are specific acts that go beyond our natural human understanding. They blow people's mind. As such, a miracle is a supernatural intervention or interference or involvement in the, in the ordinary course of nature or it's a, a, a temporary suspension Amen. In the order of things by an act of the Holy Spirit. Some examples of this include, I'm talking about working a miracle. Moses parting the Red Sea, which allowed the, our Israelite he, Hebrew ancestors to escape from the Egyptians on dry ground. Uh, the continual flow of the widow's supply of oil in the New Testament. Amen. Through the intervention of, of the prophet Elisha. Jesus feeding more than 5,000 people by the multiplication of just five loaves of bread and just two fish. Wow. Jesus raising up Lazarus from the dead. Peter raising up uh, Dorcas from the dead. The temporary blinding of a sorcerer named Elimas. Who, uh, who, who came against Paul's preaching of the good news of the kingdom. And that's something to be, people out there that need to be aware. You come against uh, the preaching of the good news of the kingdom, you may incur the wrath of God. Uh, you, you may be blinded temporary because you're coming against something that God set up. He said, touch not my anointed one, then do my prophet no harm. And he means just that. Now, interesting enough, uh, the Hebrew word for miracles or, or, or miraculous is mopeth, and it refers to this gift as, as power. The same word used for power that Jesus said will come upon the believers when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. He said, and power will shall come upon you when you receive the Holy Spirit. Miracles, amen, are, are an explosion of kingdom power in our lives. Wow, there are wonders that bring astonishment or amazement to people who see that. Wow, that wow, that's they are amazed or they're astonished. In the ministry of the kingdom of, on earth, miracles are the government or the kingdom providing. I'm talking about kingdom government providing for the special needs of the people. Whatever the miracle is, whether it's supplying food, raising the dead, or something else, uh, it, uh, uh, it is provision. Miracles are not entertainment. They're a result of the Holy Spirit through you and I under his authority, performing actions that confirm the presence of the kingdom. Jesus oftentimes said that, the, he said, repent. 
change your thinking because what because the kingdom is here the kingdom has arrived and when the kingdom has arrived there's miracles there's signs there's wonders there's everything that you wouldn't normally see it comes from the and so we're talking about the 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 kingdom keys to understanding the gifts of the holy spirit and how they relate to your everyday life we're talking about the working of miracles you can't operate and it, it, it would do us real good if we would submit to the authority of the Holy Spirit so he can activate the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge or the gift of healing or the work of miracles or the special faith or any of the other gifts of the Holy Spirit for, for what? So we could build up the body of Christ so we can build up one another so we can edify one another so we can comfort one another so we can exhort or encourage one another. Wow. Let's go on just a little bit further. So, Again, miracles are not entertainment. It's they are, they just unfirm. And miracles, Jesus said, uh, I like what Dr. Miles Monroe said one time. He said, you said they are miracles, and sure, they are miracles. He said, but what I'm doing, he said, to cause the miracles, I'm using the keys of the kingdom. I know what key, what scripture to use to unlock the provision of working a miracle in someone's life, healing the sick or raising the dead and so on and so forth. Isn't that good? Now, another, it says, to another, the gift of prophecy. Oh, amen. Prophecy is a message from King Jesus given by the Holy Spirit. In an earthly language known to you and I. It's a language that we can understand. It's a, it's a kingdom given, it's giving you and I confirmation about information or revelation that the kingdom has previously said about us. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Go after love, pursue love, be in hot pursuit after love. Amen. He said, yet I want you to desire earnestly the gifts of the spirit or spiritual gift, but especially that you may prophesy or, or speak with a prophetic utterance as moved upon by the Holy Spirit. He said, for one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men or speaks in a supernatural language, that is. Do not speak to men, but you are speaking to God. So when I speak in my supernatural prayer language, or if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit, you're speaking in your supernatural prayer language. You're not talking to men. You're talking to God unless you give them an interpretation of what was being said. He said, for no one understand. Nobody understand what you're saying, just you and God. But in the spirit, you're speaking secrets or hidden mystery. But one who prophesies speaks to men to build up. Wow. In other words, pro uh, gifts of tongue and interpretation of tongue is equal to prophecy because what it does, it reveals what is being said in that tongue. Wow or in that supernatural language. So one who speaks in a tongue uh, uh, builds up, uh, uh, supercharges him or herself, but the one who prophesies builds up or supercharges the body of Christ. He said, now I, I pray that you you all spoke in, in supernatural language, but even more that you will prophesy or give a prophetic word of others. And greater is the one who prophesies than the one who speaks in a supernatural language unless there's an interpretation so that the everybody can be built up. Now, the purpose of prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and consolation or comfort. Uh, Paul said that prophecy is the most important gift of all. Why, Dr. Clark? Because it builds up the believers. Wow. The word edification comes from the Hebrew word, means an act of building in the sense of promotion of spiritual growth. In other words, it, it will help you grow up spiritually. It, it also signifies strengthening or building up people in the ways of the kingdom. Uh, so the word uh, exhortation means uh, calling to one side, so or uh, either an exhortation or comfort. Comfort means speaking closely to, to anyone. So it, it means comfort with a great degree of tenderness and having compassion and encouraging that person. I think of this word in the sense of calming people down in the face of challenges and difficulty that we're dealing with in this earth realm right now and bringing peace to that person's heart, bringing peace to that person's mind, bringing comfort, bringing uh, uh, using compassion, amen, to be able to bless that person that's why we are here sent here on this earth to bless amen we're blessed to be a blessing to one another Paul said that the gift of prophecy should be earnestly sought after you should go after that gift amen for the betterment of everybody even the prophet Joel said your sons and daughters will prophesy 
Amen. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out of my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Prophesy. Prophecy is an important gift to you and I, but it has to be used. It has been too uh, often been misused. It has to be used correctly. And so we're going to go into our next lesson when we take up next time about guidelines and how to use the gift of prophecy. Number one, prophecy is not one-sided. It must be confirmed by the giver and the receiver. And I got to confirm again because I just ran out of time. Well, praise God for another day and privilege and opportunity uh, to share with you the living word of God. We trust that you had enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed bringing it, the, the kingdom kingdom to understanding the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, given to the body of Christ, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and teacher, amen, and all of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit deems necessary or as he delegates those gifts to you and I, amen, for our everyday life. We bless you apostolically and prophetically. We speak and release the blessing of the Lord upon you that maketh one rich and he has no sorrow, no grief, no sickness, no disease, no failure, no defeat. Amen. If you're struggling, I suggest that you examine yourself to see whether you are operating in now love and, and now faith. Check yourself, as one of my ministers say here, before you wreck yourself. You need to examine yourself to see whether you're walking in love because you can. when you step out of love, you're stepping out of character. When you're stepping out of faith, you're stepping out of character, and the enemy will come right on in through our words and through our thoughts, through our ideas, and through our actions. So uh, we cancel every satanic in the mind assignment, arrest every demon spirit, reverse every curse. Amen. We command the hand of the Lord that justice be for you and judgment against the evil one. We command that thief, amen, who comes to kill, steal, and destroy to restore everything back sevenfold, past, present, and a future in advance. We close all doors in the name of Jesus, seal all doors in the blood of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And the angel armies are released to cause these prophetic words to come to pass. Push the share button, like it, and subscribe it. We'll see you real soon amen blessings love you to life and there's nothing you could ever 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 never ever ever think of doing about it see you real soon